Alright, so in this video I am just going to introduce the concept of U substitution and show you the main principles so that you can use them in practice and in other examples when we do them in other videos. So the purpose of U substitution and what drives our reasoning for creating this method is that we need methods to evaluate more complicated antiderivatives or integrals. Remember, the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that integrating is equivalent to finding an antiderivative. So we need to be able to evaluate more complicated ones. Not everything's just going to be as simple as one of the rules we have already. Specifically, U substitution helps us undo chain rule derivatives. So derivatives that use the chain rule. Let's consider an example. So suppose we're taking the derivative of sine of x squared. So when we do this, the outside function is sine and the inside function is x squared. So I take the derivative of the outside function, that's cosine, leaving the inside function alone, x squared, and I multiply by the derivative of the inside function, 2x. So I'm getting that the derivative of sine x squared is cosine x squared times 2x. And this is my derivative using chain rule. Okay, so if I ask you to find the integral of cosine of x squared times 2x with respect to x, you would say, okay, finding the integral is equivalent to finding the antiderivative. And so the antiderivative is just a function whose derivative is this integrand, cosine x squared 2x. And I know what that is. I know that it's sine x squared, and I put my plus c on there to represent a general antiderivative. And we could check when we take the derivative of sine x squared plus c, we get the integrand of the integral, cosine x squared 2x. So the antiderivative is sine x squared plus c. However, we only really knew this, right, because I just told you to take the derivative. Like, I asked you to do that first, and then now we're looking at the antiderivative. So how do we recognize this in cases where we don't automatically see what the antiderivative is? This is where U substitution comes in handy. So let's walk through the formal understanding and explanation for what U substitution is. Okay, so with the chain rule, we know that the derivative of f of g of x is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So this is just our chain rule for finding derivatives that we learned in differential calculus. So we're going to use this information to help us do integrals that involve a similar process. And we're going to call this u substitution, which you will see why it's called that in a moment. So given the chain rule, we know that the integral of f prime of g of x times g prime of x dx is going to be equal to f of g of x plus c. And this works because f of g of x plus c when we take its derivative, we get the integrand. So this works because f prime of g times g prime is the derivative of f of g of x plus c. And so this means that f of g of x plus c is the antiderivative for f prime of g times g prime. Okay, that is a lot of words, but I'm just trying to make sure that you see the relationships going on here and that you believe the statements I've written. So what we are going to do to make things clear to us is we're going to make a substitution. So we're going to let g of x be equal to u. So this is a technique that we actually use a lot as we continue on in mathematics. We just like to sort of replace parts of what we're working with with other variables in order to make the problem look a little easier to us. Make it easier to understand just by looking at it. So I'm going to take that integral that we had and replace g of x with u. So now I have f prime of u times g prime of x dx. Okay, so what about that g prime of x? We should be able to do something with that since we have our substitution for g. We'd like to also write that in terms of u. So let me show you how we find that out. So if g of x is equal to u, I can find g prime just by taking the derivative. So I'm taking the derivative with respect to x of g, and then g is just u with my new substitution. So I'm taking the derivative with respect to x of u, and simplifying, I can write this as du dx. 
So I have that g prime of x is equal to du dx. And something we're going to do to make this even easier on ourselves is we're going to take the convention that when we have g prime of x is equal to du dx, I'm going to rewrite that dx next to the g prime. Basically, I'm multiplying dx on both sides, and it's canceling out on the right-hand side. The math behind why we can do this is kind of weird because du dx is just like a notation to represent taking the derivative of. So what does it really mean to multiply by dx? So that's why I say we're taking the convention that it works this way. You don't need to worry about it too much. Basically, whatever you want to work will work here. But some mathematicians are really picky about how this works and what it means. So just know I'm being a little hand wavy here about what we're doing. The important thing is that you know that we are letting g prime of x dx be equal to du. And this is really going to help us out when we start to do integrals. Okay, so going back to my integral, I'm going to rewrite it as f prime of u du. I can replace that g prime of x dx with du. Now I have a new integral that has entirely written in terms of u. I don't see any x variables anywhere. I just have u variables. And this makes it a little easier for us to then compute. So the antiderivative of f prime is just f. So I'm getting that the solution to this integral is f of u plus c. That's because the antiderivative of the derivative is the original function. Hopefully that makes sense. It's a little hard to keep track of all these derivatives and antiderivatives sometimes. Then, now that I've computed the integral and I don't have an integral symbol anymore, I'm going to replace u with what I initially substituted it as. So I said g of x was u. So now I'm getting that my solution is f of g of x plus c, which is what we had originally. So it might not look like too much here, but that middle step of replacing the integral with only u variables is really going to help us out when we start to do some examples. So let me show you what it looks like in that example we initially started with here. So we had the integral of cosine of x squared times 2x dx. Now we want to solve this. So remember, what we're trying to do is find that inside function, that g of x, and rewrite it in order to make our lives easier. So here I'm noticing that I have cosine of x squared. So I'm thinking that of x squared represents my inside function. So I'm going to let u be equal to x squared. Then the derivative of u is 2x, and I put a dx there to represent that it's with respect to x. Now I can rewrite my original integral by replacing each of the parts with either u or du. So x squared is u, and then my 2x dx is du. Now I have a new integral, cosine of u du. This has no x's left in it, and I can compute this just like a regular antiderivative. So the antiderivative of cosine is just sine, and I'm doing sine of u plus c. Then, to get my final solution, I replace u with what I initially substituted it for, which is x squared. And I'm getting sine of x squared plus c. Cool, right? So we got the final answer, we got the antiderivative, but we were able to get it from writing an intermediate step that was a little easier for us to solve. So these u substitution problems can get increasingly complex, but I'm going to go through quite a few examples with you in my other videos on this concept. Okay, so to wrap up, I just want to walk through the basic steps of u substitution, which we sometimes call u sub, and these steps are going to come back when we do more examples. So the first step is to identify the inside function, g of x, and we're going to let u be equal to g of x. So remember, we're trying to find that inside function in order to make our lives easier, and you can also keep in mind, we're going to need to find the derivative of that inside function, our g prime. So you could be thinking ahead and looking for that g prime somewhere in the integral, or the du. Basically, you should be looking for something and its derivative present inside the integral. Then you're going to find the derivative of g of x, the inside function you determined in step one. And then you're going to have du is equal to g prime of x dx. So basically, you're finding u and du in these first two steps. 
So once you have u and du, your third step is to substitute them into the integral, and you want a new integral that is now simple and has none of the previous variable in it. So you should have a new integral that you can evaluate for step four. And finally, after you've evaluated the integral, you're gonna replace u back to g of x to get back to the original variable. Okay, so these steps will be a little more understandable once you've done some more examples, but I wanted to give them to you now so that you've seen them when we get to other videos and examples with u substitution. Okay, that is it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.